Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about mathematics in Guild Wars 2. In Guild Wars 2, many buffs are applied to 5 targets. The target selection works by distance. You apply the buff to yourself and to the 4 closest players, prioritizing your subgroup. Spotter, for example, is a 9 second buff that gets applied once every 3 seconds. To how many players can we simultaneously apply this buff? Well, we can have 4 players here, and we can have 4 players here, and we can just alternate between them, right? We give them spotter, move over quickly, give them spotter, move over back, and then back and forth. Just switch places once every 3 seconds and all 8 players will have perfect spotter uptime. We can go further, we can um, give it to 3 or 4 more allies by cycling through 12 players. Now this is obviously not realistic in a raid, um, because in a raid the people will stack like this. So who will get spotter here is sort of random as long as you're moving around quite a bit. A very popular speedrunning comp in the previous meta, but also on certain bosses in the current meta, is a comp with one druid and seven power chronomancers in the same subgroup. How much spotter uptime does one power chronomancer get? And in this video we are trying to answer this question mathematically. And then we will also check if the answer makes sense. Let's first make an assumption. Every 3 seconds the 4 chronos of the 7 that get spotter are completely randomly determined independent of previous spotter applications. So each chrono has a fair shot of 4 out of 7 to get spotter. Let's look at an individual power chronomancer. The chrono starts the fight at 0 seconds of spotter. There are two options for this chrono now. He can either still not get spotter and move to the downtime state, or he can get spotter and 3 seconds later he will have 6 seconds of spotter remaining, right? Because he got 9 seconds of spotter and we are 3 seconds in the future already, so 6 seconds remaining. From there he can either get another application of spotter and end up at 6 seconds of spotter remaining again, or he can not get spotter and move to the 3 seconds remaining slot. On the other hand, if the chrono was in spotter downtime at the start, he can either not get spotter again and stay in downtime, or he can finally get spotter and also move to the 6 seconds remaining. And finally, from 3 seconds remaining, he can either not get spotter and move back to 0 seconds remaining, or he can get spotter and refresh to 6 seconds of spotter. This describes the entire spotter interaction for a single power chronomancer. Now to model how spotter is di distributed, we can assign probabilities to those arrows. I have named 4 7th I have named P and 3 7th I have named Q. And we see here, to move from state 0, with probability P we go to 6 seconds and with probability Q we go to downtime. And here we stay at Q at downtime with probability Q and we move to P with probability P. We move to 6 with probability P and so on. So each of these arrows has a probability assigned to it. And mathematically we can also write these probabilities in some sort of a table, and this table is called a matrix, but that doesn't matter here. The first line is the downtime line, 
if you want to know what the probability is to move from downtime to the six second state, we look here. If you want to know what the probability is to move from the zero second state to downtime, it is here. So each of these numbers is stands for one of the of the states from and one of the states to. We can actually now calculate the probability of being in a certain position at a certain point in time. Now to write our position in this scheme mathematically as a probability, we will write a vector of probabilities. Here I have the vector 0, 1, 0, 0, representing the probability of being in the downtime state, 0, or being in the 0 second spot remaining state, the probability of being in the 3 seconds remaining state, which is impossible at the start of a fight, or the probability of being in the 6 seconds remaining state, also with probability 0 at the first step. As it turns out, if you want to calculate the probabilities of your position after one time step, you only need to multiply the vector by this matrix. So after one step, with probability 3 out of 7, we are in downtime state. With probability 0, we are at 0 seconds. With probability 0, we are at 3 seconds remaining. And with probability 4 seventh, we are in the 6 second remaining state. And to then continue, we can input this vector instead and get our position after 6 seconds into the find. And we will see our new pro position probabilities are 9 out of 49 cases we are in downtime, in 0% chance that we have 0 seconds of spot remaining but are not in downtime. We have a 12 out of 49 chance of having 3 seconds remaining and we have a 4 seventh chance of having 6 seconds of the buff remaining. And again we can insert this new vector at the position of the old one and get the probabilities for our positions after the next step. And so on. What we realize here is that this vector compared to the last step hasn't actually changed. You see, the product of these two is the same as the product of these two. So now we can use this information to calculate the total spotter uptime. In a shorter fight this will be obviously skewed a bit in a different direction, but if the fight is long enough the spotter uptime will eventually approach about 92% or 92.1% while the spotter downtime will approach about 7.8%. So this is the answer. 92.1% spotter uptime for one power chronomancer in a group of 7 chronos and 1 druid. Well, but is that true? In this fight we have the druid at 100% spotter uptime and the group as a whole has a 80% uptime. What we need to say about this 80% is that this is including the druid. Um, if you want the true averages, you, we need to do some more math. Um, in particular, we have to take this 80% uptime. We know this is by eight players, so we have 80% times 8, which is 640%, then we subtract the 100% the from the druid, 540%, and 
and we divide this again by 7 to arrive at about 77% spotter uptime on the chronos. And I have said that spotter uptime should be about 92% in an infinitely long fight. Granted, these guys were pretty fast, the phase lasted 36 seconds, but still, 77% versus, versus 92% is a big difference. So, the question now is, where did we actually go wrong here? Remember when I made the assumption? Spotter is distributed fairly ran and randomly. Well, that is not really what happens, is it? If you take a closer look at this spotter table, we don't see every chrono being at around 80% or so. Quite the opposite. What happens instead is that the sum of the chronos have 100% spotter uptime, our 99.936%, 100%, and others barely get any spotter. So what is going on here? The answer is simple, right? When you get spotter at a certain point in time, that means you are standing close to the druid. All you need to do to get spotter again, three seconds later, is stay near the druid. So let's change the assumption. Don't assume that spotter is distributed fairly. Make the following alternative assumption. Out of the four chronos who have received spotter in the last step, one of them is guaranteed to get spotter again in the next step because he's so close to the druid that he will not get out in time again. This changes the matrix or the table with the probabilities to this, which looks quite similar to the table we've had before, it's just some values swapped around. Okay, then after 20 time step to reach the equilibrium, um, we will find that the probability of being, having downtime right now is about 16.3% and the other probabilities being like 12% of having 0 seconds remaining and 21% for Three seconds remaining and 50% of having six seconds of spot remaining. So if we sum these three up, we get to a total of about 83% of spotter uptime. And that is quite close already to the 77% we have observed. So I think this is a much better solution than the naive approach that gave us 92% as a result. So this modified model seems to work more accurately. The math I showed here has a quite nice application when you try to speedrun rates. And that's why I wanted to show it to you. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe you have seen something new you didn't already know. If you have an idea for what Guild Wars 2 related math problem I could have a look at next, feel free to throw suggestions my way. Thanks for watching.